Thank you, Barry Center. Um, I want to read a few poems in remembrance of some people that have passed. <clears throat> this first one is uh, for Henry Lettingham. He was an eye doctor in Frankfurt that started the reading series uh, in Frankfurt for the Frankfurt's Arts League that went on for many years, produced many books, and uh, spawned other readings. Poem for Henry. The wet weather run off a trickle. Young chickadees play chase with a fuss. A goldfinch bathes in a pool. Cardinal and blue jay, too, but more cautious. Sun brings truckload of manure for Father's Day. The hostas behind the wild rose are next to get their share. The morning spent printing a memorial service for an old friend. It was expected. He had planned the funeral. I'd been waiting weeks for the call. Each time the phone rang, I'd think, this is it, it's finally over. But when the call came, I was off guard. I wonder if death comes this way, or if he saw death sneaking through the brush, waiting for the rain to stop, the runoff to slow to a trickle before reaching out and easing his suffering. Memorial for Philip Taylor, 1978-2003. None of us wants to be here like this in our sorrow and grief. We can never understand. There are no answers. It just is. We bring with us the memory of those we know who are gone. And we introduce them to Philip. They come back to us unexpectedly. Anywhere, anytime, in wonder and solace and joy. It is now part of us forever, and we are changed in ways we cannot now comprehend. On eating the last piece of Dara's shortbread, So much in those few weeks, after Christmas, Paula died, expected, but we went about less whole. We now meet with more joy, for we are alive, and we remember and better understand our lives together. With so many gone, we are all special. I should tell Dara I'm out of her shortbread. <laughs> Mike always brings a fruitcake for Christmas. He gets it as a present from a monastery 
in Virginia. For years, I would split it with my dad. He loved fruitcakes. I don't know how he got the taste, but every Christmas he got one. And what a treat to see him eat. He would slice cheese, lay it on top with religion, open his mouth wide, you could see his crooked teeth. And what pleasure in the bite. He died a few years ago. Mike, I'll only need half a cake now. I'm still trying to find the pleasure. <laughs> and will not stop until I see the secret. James Baker Hall. Jim left the daylilies in full bloom. Jim is now a daylily. My mother comes when the dogwood blooms, as if she were still here, so sharp the memory. We think of the loved often, to remember what was shared, ask questions like I'd ask of you and you and you. Like on walks in the backwood, when we come across a clump of daffodils and realize here was someone's home, the house over here. And I'm listening, you telling me how this life is put together, how this poem is put together, how to see in this light. This is a story that Richard Taylor tells, and I have stolen it from him <laughs> for today. When Richard Taylor became Kentucky's new poet laureate, to much acclaim from his supporters, he was at a reception with fellow poet laureate James Steele. He told Mr. Steele he hoped to follow in his footsteps. Mr. Steele said, I don't leave footsteps. <laughs> Living in a divided country, after the Arctic plunge, we all ask the same question. Did you lose your water? We all feel the same if we did. We all feel the same if we didn't. We can agree on something. <laughs> 